Mickey Berry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise with great pleasure to speak to the Tasman District Council validation and recovery of certain rates bill. And if I choose to speak at length to the member who's just resumed her seat, then I shall do so. And I would have to say that the flawed logic and manipulative nonsense that we've just heard from that member is entirely inaccurate, as is much of the, th the nonsense that she peddles. Uh, but, uh, you know, staying with the point, uh, which is what I would like to do, because unlike that member who just resumed her seat, I do respect the need for a local community uh, to have their voice heard, to have their message put through Parliament in the way that it needs to be done. And I must say I'm a little bit surprised that someone from the party of the member who is actually putting this through as a bill uh, would take such a jaundiced uh, and really quite a cynical view. But I suppose given that member's stand on a number of issues, that is uh, not surprising particularly cynical from the cynical that, oh, they filibuster about everything. This is not uh, such a silly exercise as all that. And, and I return to the subject in question because as someone who's recently had a member's bill drawn from the ballot myself uh, and, uh, and has also been sitting on the Local Government and Environment Select Committee uh, for a couple of years now, I'm very well aware of how important it is for local bills and for members' bills uh, to reflect what their community wants and needs. And that's a very important issue. When we look at the validation uh, and recovery of certain rates, which is what this bill of Damien O'Connor's is, is uh, seeking for us to do, um, I am reminded of Kaipara, and I am reminded again of the need for local government reforms. And the New Zealand first individual, whose name escapes me for the moment, it's been uh, got wrong a few times in this House this afternoon, he's not a very memorable individual. And what he says is not particularly memorable either, and that's probably why he was the lowest polling candidate and de didn't get his deposit back at the last election, nor was he voted back as the mayor or as the, the life of Brian. That's very good. It is very good. I think that was something like his name. But I, I think when we look at what is the substance of this piece of legislation, one of the, uh, the submissions that really came, brought it home to me how important it was that we do this thing thoroughly uh, was from the Mayor of Tasman District Council, uh, Richard Kempthorne, who had spoken at length uh, to the Labour member who was somewhat jaundiced uh, just a few moments ago, uh, and as well as that to Damien O'Connor, and talked about the problems that they have had and the, the various solutions that they put forward. And I'd like to go through those, Mr Speaker, because I think they are vitally important, because unless we learn from the mistakes that have been made in places like Tasman and Kaipara, and unless the local government laws are changed to make the processes more rigorous, then there will indeed be a need for more revalidation bills in, in the nature of this one and the Kuiper one. And nobody in this House, with the possible exception of that member, whatever his name is, from New Zealand First, uh, would want that to happen because it does waste the time of the House. And that does cost a lot of money for taxpayers. And it is uh, something that when you add up uh, all of the advisers who've worked on these things, all of the, uh, the, the plane fares bringing people up from the West Coast, all of the expense that individuals have gone to, uh, then you can see that there is a real need to listen and to pay proper attention to what goes on with these bills so that they do not ever happen again. Nobody, uh, with a couple of exceptions in this House, uh, want to see people go to this sort of trouble. Um, so when I heard Richard Kempthorne talking about uh, the, the idea of remitting rates, which was one of the things that was put forward as a potential solution, um, I, I, I wonder just how much rigour they'd put into that process. And as it turned out, they had deliberated over it for more than a couple of years, and that they worked out that by remitting rates over more than two years uh, with the ratepayers was not going to be a lawful, let alone a practicable solution. Plus, it would cost a great deal of extra money. So, as the Mayor said to us in his submission uh, to the Local Government and Environment Select Committee, which I must say was very ably chaired uh, by Nikki Wagner, uh, as, as, uh, as is everything that she chaired, um, in the discussions, they canvassed a lot of different ways of compensating people, and in particular, um, Bob Schmucky. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Bob Schmucky, he's something of a local hero, but he's gone beyond that, really. Uh, he was an individual who was told no, who was told that it was not possible. And he was an individual who stuck it out, who stood by his convictions and principles, which is something that New Zealand First, uh, particularly the member who was speaking earlier, could take note of. Bob Schmucky, un unlike the lily-livered, spineless people, was somebody who would not take no for an answer. And the council and the mayor actually apologised to him. Um, they wrote to the committee 
and through Nikki Wagner, our chair, enclosed an apology to Mr Schmucky and to the community for their failings in the whole matter. So when we look at accountability and uh, transparency and, and really, I guess, stepping up to the plate and acknowledging when wrong has occurred, uh, then, then this is a very good example of, of what could and should happen. Uh, when we last debated this bill in the House some weeks ago, I asked Damien O'Connor, uh, the sponsoring member in particular, uh, if he had felt that the, the residue of bitterness uh, had gone, and he had talked a little bit about that and said that he felt that some of those uh, old wounds had been healed. And I guess at a, at a time like this, ratepayers, or over an issue like this, uh, ratepayers really uh, have their opportunity at the time of the local government elections, and they did take action, and they did vote out uh, many of the people. But I suppose it's fair to say that as a result of this piece of legislation coming through, uh, there has been a healing of the community and there has been a sense that um, the wrongs have been put right. And I think that as a select committee, we comforted ourselves with the thought that at least that that community uh, was going through a proper process, uh, that Mr Schmucky's costs, for example, in coming up to Wellington um, to the select committee hearings, which he did, I think, twice, Nicky, at least, um, if, if not more. He also went to a lot of expense and uh, getting, you know, laminated photographs done and all the rest of it. Such was the courage of his convictions, but that those costs were met by the council. And I think, uh, you know, in the words of Alan Martin, it's the putting right that counts, and uh, that's what uh, Richard Kempthorne, the Mayor of Tasman District Council, and the others uh, tried to do, and, and with the guidance of Parliament. So when we look at the, uh, the wrongs, they, they were really simple, actually. It was about not giving a map at the right time. It was the sort of basic mistake. It, it's not the, the sort of worrying levels of incompetence and difficulties that we saw in Kaipara in some detail, but it was more that just genuine mistakes were made and it was a blunder. And it became more and more difficult to see how people on the council could work their way out of it and work their way through it. And I know that Damien O'Connor spent a lot of time talking to them, had several meetings. These are not easy exchanges. They were, I think, probably quite tense, uh, judging from some of the discussion that we had at Select Committee. Um, but the implications for ratepayers generally are horrific, and I think it's really important that ratepayers understand that they are able to, uh, when, th when things have really gone awry, uh, and, and when they've been let down by their council, as they were in this case, uh, and, and it does need to be set straight, that it can and will happen. So, um, you know, this is a bill which does highlight to other councils the importance of proper scrutiny when you are setting rates, and there are a lot of lessons to be learned for underperforming councils in this, and it's pretty much be warned. So, when we looked at this, and and the, and the changes that came through at Select Committee, uh, one of the ones that we needed to, to really address uh, was clauses 5A, 6 and 9. They needed to, uh, their language needed to be tidied up. And these sort of technical amendments uh, may seem boring to the members of the opposition who aren't really paying attention, uh, but they are certainly very much uh, a, a, an important part of what went wrong and then how it was to be put right. I mean, we as a committee were very sympathetic to the proposals to debate Clause 9, but ultimately found that that course of action was really outside the scope of Damien's bill, and it didn't appear uh, a, a good idea to go back and revisit it after all the hard work that had gone on. Um, the committee also noted that there were going to be a lot of practical implications of deleting the, the Clause 9 in particular, um, because that really, I suppose, set us on a different course and a different uh, path of things that might need correcting. So we erred on the side of caution, and we determined that uh, what the ratepayers had paid in the rate 2006-2007 uh, was all right. They, they ascertained uh, through our, our committee discussions that the ra current ratepayers uh, were the same ratepayers as those in 2006 and 7. So we went through the detail of it in, in some detail, I would have to say, um, and really I think arrived at a bill which does satisfy all parties. Uh, it is absolutely essential, this piece of legislation, to validate those certain rates that were set incorrectly. Uh, without that validation, the Council remained very vulnerable uh, to further legal challenges from ratepayers over incorrectly setting rates, and those legal challenges, of course, would have had to be paid for by the ratepayers, who would be again penalised uh, for, for that initial uh, blunder. Uh, some residents objected to the details of the storm 
water rate, as I indicated, uh, Mr Smarkey and, and others uh, ad address those concerns very well. Um, the committee also noted that the aspects of the Council's consultations were not ideal, but then those steps that were taken by the Council to improve the way uh, that rates are set uh, so that similar rates were not made in the future uh, was very much, uh, you know, it was, it, they were to be commended on it. Uh, and that is why I commend this piece of legislation to the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker. A call, Phil Twyford. Mr Speaker, um, Labour supports the...